yeah hello there and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here so the next step let us go and see how we can run this particular uh function that we have created we have created a two asynchronous function over here and let's see how we can run this particular function uh let's see a two points function or a three function uh together in a in a concurrent manner so which means that it can run the uh tax one tax two and a tax three in a concurrent manner so that is what we are going to learn in this lesson so for that we'll just copy this particular uh, piece of the code over here and we'll create the new button out of it so this will be of the tax four and i guess i'll just go and remove this one out from here and uh for that let's go down over here okay so we need to create a function first of all so for that i'm just going to copy this one from here and let's go and have this particular two function below this one so simple tax one future and i'll just go and see the uh let's say we want to say the c-o-n-c-u-r-e-n-t concurrent over here and i'll just go and copy this one as well over here so simple tax to future concurrent right and uh, then what we will do inside this particular function is we'll uh, get some currently we are just printing out or we are just looping and calculating the value but uh, what i would like to do over here is we want to uh, run some asynchronous code inside this particular function as well so for that uh, let's go over here in the tax one over here so debug the tax one is started that is fine and then we have this sum uh, local variable and then i'm going to look to this particular value so let's go and say i just want to look through around a 30 over here and once that is done what i'm going to go and i'm going to use the future over here so future uh future dot the delay and let's say a const of the uh, duration so i need to give give the uh, duration over here duration will be of the second so every uh, let's say second of the one second i want to go and execute this particular uh, line of code over here so up every after every one second just go and run this particular code so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this over here and uh, paste it over here so it's going to calculate that particular value for us over here and then i'm also going to print out that particular value over here so let's go and print out that one so uh, let's say the tax one uh, we'll just say the uh, sum over here tax one sum will be of the uh, dollar sum value that we have calculated over here and we'll do the same thing over here for the tax two right so let's go and add in that particular uh, feature over here this will be of the tax two so once we have that uh what we are going to do is i guess let's go and return that from here and as well as over here and uh now we are going to go to this particular code over here and now we need to call that to particular uh function over here so i'll just go and say the uh let's go and create the val resu as result so let not the val so var result 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 over here which will be of equal to the futur future uh, dot the uh, wait over here so we are going to wait for the future over here and this will take the list of the uh, the futures over here so right it takes the list of the futures or the iterable and we can just go and pass in the uh, function that we have just created over here which is of this one so just copy this particular uh, function and we are going to paste it inside the future that wait over here and then we have the another one which is of the uh two as well over here so simple tax to future concurrent over here right so now we got the result so now you can see this is the uh, future and it's also the uh, list of the int over here so we need to extract the value out of it as well and if you can remember previously if you want to extract the value you have to use uh, the uh, one option is to dot to the uh, then or else another option will be to await it 
so we'll just go and use the await keyword over here just wait for this one to complete and return us the actual value instead of the future over here so this is going to return us the list of the int over here and then once we have that we can just go and calculate that particular uh, value over here so what i'm going to do over here is the result right so uh the result and the, the list of the first uh value on our list and also this will be of the second value that will be of the index of the zero and then the one so we are going to calculate both of those value or if you want to print out that you can also print out the tax one um let's say tax one via value value and that tax one value will be just this particular uh value over here and then you can also go and say that this is of the tax to the value which will be of the index of the one as well so now here if you remember previously we are waiting that particular uh, function to go and complete it and but it's going to run in the concurrent manner so we just want to we just don't want to have something like a wait for this one uh, after complete this one go and run this one here what we are doing is we want to run in a concurrent manner which means that both of these function can execute it tax simultaneously so which means that tax one is running and then the tax two is also running and once it is complete it's going to uh, await that particular value and uh, unless all of this uh, the feature or the function that you have added over here completes and then it's going to return us the value unless it is completed it's not going to return us the value to our result variable over here all these two or, or let's say if you have a five function added over here or the the future or the asynchronous function call over here then it's going to complete then only it's going to return right so that is what we are saying wait for all of this to complete over here and if you don't want to wait is it will go and execute this particular line of code before it's completing or before returning the value for us but here we want to return the value before we can print it out over here so let's go and uh, say this is the tax for i guess that should be fine so let's just go and hot restart and now we have the tax for available over here just press this one over here and we'll go and take a look so now you can see let's make it a bit larger over here now you can see that the we have the tax one uh started and then the tax one ended okay so i guess it's not the one so here is the one so we have the tax one all right and uh, then we have the uh tax two as well over here but now we can see that it is still running in the synchronous order which means that it's executing line by line which means that it's going to complete the first function that we have implemented over here and then the uh, second function is going to trigger so you can see the tax one is running and then the tax two is running so there there is some issue over here that we need to fix to run it in the concurrent manner so let's go to the function that we have created which is of the simple tax one future concurrent so i guess you got the idea what we have missed over here so uh let's pause it over here and let's fix that one so i hope you can fix that one and if you have fixed that that's perfectly fine but if you cannot then that's also perfectly fine let's go and see how we can fix it so if you remember that why we use the await keyword over here is we want to wait for that particular future to be completed but here if you take a look the future dot delay doesn't await it which means that it's going to just go and execute one by one before it's going to wait for it so here there is no asynchronous actually code running so what we want to do is we want to await this one over here so future dot delay returns the future of the null over here so we are if this is a future then we can await it right so we, we want to wait for this one to go loop and loop over here so it will wait for the one second before it's going to run the next over here so we'll do the same thing over here we will go and uh, await it over here so this should fix that the concurrency error over here or not the error but the it was not able to run simultaneously or in the concurrent manner over here so let's click on the uh, uh tax four over here 
so now you see that we have the tax one started tax two started you can see that the tax one tax two is running here uh, in a concurrent manner so which means now using the asynchronous program over here we were able to execute this particular uh, function that is of the two uh, asynchronous function that we have a simple tax one future concurrent and then the simple tax two future concurrent which is running in the in the concurrent manner over here so it's running the tax over here tax one is ended but tax two is still running over here so this is running for the 200 times and this is just running for the 30 times over here so that's 200 times is quite a long so we are just going to complete it let's say by the 20 or let's say just run it for the uh, 10 times over here so let's just go and restart the application and we are just going to run this one and it's going to run that one and then the tax 2 should complete first because it has the lesser uh, the uh, loop over here so you can see the tax 2 ended first right so tax 2 is already ended but the tax 1 is still running and giving us the particular value so that's the thing that we have to take note so if you want to run the program in the um, the concurrent manner so we can use this particular option over here but what if this is going to return us the result of the int over here but what if if you have some function the written type is of the different like uh, maybe you have one more function that's going to return us the uh, boolean or maybe it's going to return us the uh, object of of the person or the student or maybe uh, it's going to return as the string so in this case um, that's much uh, a bit difficult over here because you need to cast that particular object manually right so what we need to do is in the next lecture we'll go and see how we can utilize the another way of running a concurrent function over here or the concurrent asynchronous function if the return type is of the let's say a different uh, written type maybe we have integer and the string right so both are the different data type so let's meet up in the next lecture and let's see how we can do that until then have a great day